Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation with a note on the use of the program of uh, program Luck Grib. It's a Macintosh program available from the App Store. I think it's twenty dollars, quite a bargain. And uh, I want to discuss a special use of that program. And this video is essentially a illustration of an article and and this article is online in our navigation blog it's called how to add a draw style to luck grip and so the articles here and there's notes and uh, other discussion that might be different and maybe that's a better reference but for uh, uh, well hopefully the video shows the process um, the the other thing is the video could also be subtitled how to use luck grip on land this is a this program was actually designed by a mariner, a sailor, and it meant for marine weather applications offshore. But it also is a very powerful tool and could be used if you live, you know, somewhere here, or Kansas, Florida, Texas. You could use it to set up your own weather analysis. And the, manu and the operation I'm going to discuss now is, um, would be crucial to that. Because as soon as you want to put, like, land temperatures and rain probabilities and thunderstorm probabilities and so on snow as soon as you want to start doing those things you'll find those this program doesn't have that drawing capability already in it but it is very flexible powerful tool and I'm that's what I want to show now is how you can add your own what is called draw styles and also to illustrate another feature of this program about the versatility of uh, downloading grip files and we'll use the GFS model and I just picked an example at random in the article which was uh, for example something uh, the GFS for example in Mariners they use the wind speed and the pressure and the precipitation and gust winds and maybe some other parameters but that's mainly it but uh, the GFS model has um, has thousands, uh, not thousands, has about 300 different parameters we can look at. So let's look at this. And so here's the symbol for a new request. I guess first I might want to draw a box. Let me just say go here, state of Washington area. And then this is a symbol I want to make a new request. And so new request. Now to get the sophisticated stuff, here's, here's the normal GFS and all these other uh, data that's available for the but for the sophisticated GFS data we click here models there and then go to GFS and then go to parameters and now we start seeing all of the random things and the example I chose just because it looked interesting was the soil temperature at one to two meters below the ground okay so there you go uh, for uh, gardeners I guess or plumbers oh plumbers or gardeners and then then just for reference, we'll take the pressure and the wind, the normal mariner's pressure and wind. And then on top of that, we take the soil temperature one or two meters below the ground. Okay. And then I can say next. And then I'll take this, say, every six hours. So every say, temperature underground is not going to change that much. Every 12 hours for seven days. And then I get it. Download. So that's now downloading that file. And uh, once that file comes up, we're going to discover, I'm, I'm pretty sure, we're going to discover that the wind and pressure show up nicely, but this program straight out of the box doesn't anticipate you to be caring about the temperature of one to two meters underneath the ground. And so we're going to have to fix that. And that's the, that's the operation we're going to do. But this is also just an illustration to show you this process of how long it takes to get all that data how big, I don't know how big that was. I missed the notice on it. But anyway, there comes the data. And uh, here, is the, here is the region. And sure enough, I've got the, oh, I don't see the pressure here. Um, here's, a, here's a style sheet. So I'm going to turn on the, the pressure. And let's look at it. It's every two millibar. That's OK. OK. Oh, I still don't see the pressure. Pressure at sea level. Uh, wait just a minute. Wind. Oh, that's that's a wind. 
it's you gotta punch the right buttons okay there's the isobars and then you can move this slider down here and you see how the isobars are changing and the winds are changing around the state looks like there's some kind of what is that it's a low right in the middle of the state uh, but if you look up here in the top right in this area, you'll see that it's telling me the soil temperature. So it's read the data. It's read the data, but it just has no way to show it to me on the picture because it doesn't have, this is the palette of the draw styles. It has winds and pressures, that's all. So what we've got to do, because it, we can hunt around here and see this, but it's hard to tell what the profile of this underground temperature looks like if we just have to hunt around that way. So we want to make a nice draw style. So what we do first is you go up here to the, this is the active uh, grib file. I got a whole bunch of these things, but this active grib file. Then you go down here and you see the, here is the, here it shows, undrawn field, T soil at 1-2 probably depth below land level. I'm not, probably that's what that stands for. But I, for, we'll probably just uh, let, I'll show you in a minute. We can not worry about this right now. As soon as we start worrying about the temperature of the soil at different depths below the ground level, then we're going to have to come back and deal with this. But right now, we're going to just make some kind of profile that works for all temperatures, I mean, for all depths, all temperatures of the soil all soil temperatures and so to do that uh, okay draw style so you click here draw styles and then um, so the first thing I want to do is I could show here you could show this and then if this is now showing all the draw styles that are in there but and then there's contour and you have the you have the categories you have arrows that's these kind of the arrows and various kinds of arrows. You set those up later. And then you have contours. Or you have uh, what's called down here, further on down, scalar image. And scalar image is the type of draw style you need if you want to put a gradient or some nice color, uh, scaled colors in the background. So ultimately, we want to have a scalar image and a... Um, and a uh, contour for the temperature. But I know it's not there, so I can just not look for t temperature of the soil. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one. And the first one I want to add is a contour. I'm going to add them both. And the field parameter, see, notice it doesn't say what this is. But if I type this in right, T-S-O-I-L, and then click here to put in the level. See, it's, this is my confirmation that I've got something that's valid. It recognizes soil temperature. Now, I'm going to let it go for all levels for the time being. And then uh, the initial contour. And you see, I sniffed around here when we were looking at this earlier and saw that these varied from about 40. I'm going to put it, say, start at 40 and put these at 5, 5 degrees. You can always change this. It doesn't matter. You can skip it or leave it. I can change the colors here, but that none of that matters because I can come back to it. Okay, that's that. Now I want to add another one, and I want to add a scalar image so I can put these nice colors. Again, it's T-soil. Actually, let me see if it matters if it's caps or not. I better put caps. T -S -O -I yep. Okay, so that's one thing we just learned. It wants it all caps, just like it's supposed to be. And then the image colors, and these are the palettes. Well, we're going to use, you can just do this. You can just grab one of these. Let's see, where do I put it here? You can grab that. Now, later we'll go in. I'll go in later and change this. Once we sniff around the picture, I can change what temperatures these different colors mean in this, even in the gradient. And we'll do that later. Okay, so that's that. And that's done. We're done. That's how, that's all there is to it. Now I go back to the map. Again, I'm not seeing my uh, colors here yet, but they should have the option now. You see, soil temperature. Let me turn that on and turn that on. Now, um, Let's, let's go in and edit that a little bit. Again, these are, when you start making one of these, if you live in Texas somewhere and you don't have good weather forecasting, then this is a way you would set up your own, your own weather bureau, sort of. So you can look in there and get all these forecasts. Not a, by the way, not only do you get the GFS, 
which is sort of the basic global forecast system for once you get on land, you can start using the national uh, NDFD, National Digital Data, National, ND, national Digital Forecast Database, NDFD, National Digital Forecast Database. Now those, in turn, are the absolute best forecasts available. So you'll be able to display and make your graphics and all kinds of uh, movies and videos and everything else with the NDFD data, which will be as good or better than what the, the best TV guys can get. So it's a pretty powerful tool. So it looks, it sees my right parameter. What I want to do is change this. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go. But let's close and let's show what I'm going to do here. So look at the temp soil temperature here. So you see we're varying up here 39, 40, 50, 50. What are these? That's 60. So that looks like a hot spot. So it looks like the hot temperatures are around 66, something like that. And then we're down to... Uh, what's the cold? Oh, freezing up here. It's still freezing. Huh, it's interesting. Rome's burning over here at the moment, but it's still freezing here. Okay, so uh, we go to this style sheet, go to this, and now I'm going to go here. And now I'm going to just change these temperatures. Let's just say the top end's going to be 70, and then I'm just going to come down 65. And you can play with this. They have all sorts of powerful tools. Uh, 60, uh, 55, 50, uh, 45. Uh, we do a lot of experimenting with this on doing a tropical storm forecasting because we want to, there we care about winds as 0 to 34 and then 34 to 50 and uh, 60 and 50 to 64 and 64 on up. These are tropical storm and hurricane forecast wind bands. And so you can match these and make very beautiful displays. And five, okay, no, wait a minute, that's not right. 40, uh, 35, 35. Well, this is just an example, 30, okay. So let's try that. Ah, so now, okay, so that's good. And that's, that's what I had done in the article, and that's why I knew kind of where to go. So there we now have this, and again, this has got a dynamic. Let me just, what this is, is it's showing a dynamic output. So if I go here, you see I have a dynamic feedback. So that means wherever I go, it's going to draw in a contour that's appropriate to that place. I'm going to just shut that off for the time being. Okay, so here then is we have this hot, these hot spots here and the hot spot here. This is, I think, that, well, I know this is, wait a minute, that's not, uh, oh, something's wrong. I think in the paper I said that was Seattle, but actually that's not Seattle. I got to look more carefully here. There's Seattle. This is more down like Olympia and Tacoma. Ah, there's Seattle, there's Olympia and Tacoma. This looks like Portland, and I have no idea what these are. So anyway, this is an exercise now. This is not at all, you know, what, uh, I don't have immediately any goal for this, but it's just to illustrate the operation of setting up these things. Then you have a nice exercise here to figure out why are these the places in the state of Washington that have a temperature at one at, that peak out so notably? Here's 66 degrees. You know, here, this area, Tacoma and uh, Tacoma, Port, uh, Tacoma and Olympia is so much different than Seattle. Anyway, that's an exercise that's not related to what we're doing, and that's the end of uh, this demonstration. Now, the other note was you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, that I'm pushing a lot of buttons here and changing a lot of these things, and you may have it right or something, but and then worry you're going to lose it. But you can always just hit, there's a default button. It'll take them all, take either this one back or all of them back, so you don't have to worry about just randomly pushing buttons and experimenting. So that's the end of the video.